Bradley, you were at the Jets game. Uh, it was raining. The Ravens handled business as everyone understood that they would. Lamar Jackson uh, did not rush for a touchdown, but he did throw for a few, and he looked like Lamar Jackson. Uh, even in even the in man. Like, even in like terrible conditions, he looked like Lamar Jackson. Like he. He broke off. He broke off for a run that, from the vantage point of my seats, I thought they tackled him. Then I saw him emerge from five guys, and he ran like thirty-five yards. He had an amazing throw for a touchdown because I, I can't remember if it was to, if it was to Devin Duvernay, who, to his great credit, I, if, I would love to know if anybody was starting Devin Duvernay because he happened to have two touchdowns yeah. against the Jets. I'm not even sure if he's had a two touchdown game in his entire career. Um, None to and, Mark Andrews, right? Then the other no, one was, it was to, to Bateman, to, to Rashad Bateman, Bateman. Yeah, yeah. So, which is interesting and maybe should quell some of the uh the the negative talk from the receivers about Baltimore as a as a bad destination for yeah. receivers cuz Lamar can sling it Lamar can throw no, the ball the 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 the, the deep Lamar. ball that that deep ball that he had that for the touchdown was a beautiful beautiful throw and from the Jets perspective it is an embarrassment it is a disgrace it is unacceptable to be starting 37-year-old Joe Flacco, who because I understand that Zach Wilson is injured. Flacco is playing like the worst quarterback in the entire league, and he should not be playing for a professional team. He can't move. He can't pass. He can't do anything that a quarterback is supposed to be doing. He's 37 years old. Does I thought that his arm looked fairly strong in the preseason, but it didn't look good yesterday, or it, it didn't look good in person. He he couldn't he couldn't see open he couldn't see open receivers. Mm -hmm. He him scrambling looked like he had cinder blocks tied to his feet. Um, it was one of the worst in person football play foot like people playing football I have seen. I've been to a lot of bad Jets games before. I'm sorry. Um, they did they did what they did best, which is uh, refuse to recover fumbles. Corey Davis, Elijah Moore could not stop dropping balls, even though ostensibly they're being paid to be wide receivers. So uh, catching the ball is the whole thing. And um, Robert Sala was complaining about how everyone was saying that they were bad when they looked like shit. So you know when you if it talks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So kind of uh, a blessing maybe that Russell, uh, that not Russell Wilson, that a. Uh, Zach Wilson is going to be coming back in week four or five, right? Because this, they play who next? The Patriots? Who's next? Let me pull up their schedule. I mean, they haven't, I, I've pointed this out a bunch of times on the show. They're but, playing Cleveland next. Okay. That is fairly winnable because maybe Cleveland uh is uh but it's it's in cleveland the issue the issue i'm really having though is the, is the same but then the Bengals and the steelers yeah, and the dolphins and the packers and the broncos and the patriots and the bills and it snowballs from there yeah, yeah yeah the issue i have though is 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 with is with the flacco decision broadly which is that you had a you had a practice squad quarterback and in, in chris trebler who is not anybody to write home about but was at least younger than flacco and more proficient looking than flacco was so to me i'm like this seems like a move from the organization that they think that this is what you're supposed to do. Capital S supposed to do, which is have a veteran be the backup quarterback until your young guy gets back from injury. But he's terrible. So I yeah. don't know why supposed to has anything to do with it. And so it's kind of a fear based move too. it's, it's absolutely a fear based of move. an ownership, uh, an owner who is impulsive and fires people quickly. Right. And again, same thing in the same thing. Listen, Mike White, again, not anything to write home about. I mean, he had, he had the game of his life beating the Bengals last year. I, and, but at the same time, I'm thinking what I saw in person, anything would be better than that. And so the other thing that I'll say though, in, in terms of positives, fortunately, is that Michael Carter and Brees Hall looked good running the ball. Um, Sauce looked sauce in a, in a few of the plays he had really did look great. He kind of he kind of had a few plays where he really did lock up Mark Andrews, which is no easy feat mm -hmm. even for a season wow. cornerback. And um, DJ Reed got an inter interception. Um, you know there were a few there were a few bright spots and I think things to build on. But the offensive line is still a huge concern. They're still they're they're rookie fourth round or fifth round uh tackle max mitchell was playing because both Dwayne brown who they signed essentially off the scrap heap and mckay becton are both out and lakin tomlinson who they saw who they signed in the offseason did not look good that has to improve if they want any chance of being competitive and i just do not think this is the answer until zach wilson is back 
This is a lost season for them, unfortunately, but I'm hoping that they're just a little bit more patient and give Zach Wilson and this coaching staff a season that isn't from the outset so besieged by a, t- a really disadvantageous schedule and um, an injury to their starting quarterback, which sucks. You know, it sucks. So I- I'm I'm rooting for, for Zach Wilson and the Jets because I just want you guys to not have another situation where the quarterback a high quarterback pick doesn't pick because it doesn't pan out because I think Zach Wilson has the talent to be really good and the big issue and the biggest issue that I going forward in terms of long term even beyond this season or anything in terms of like a bird's eye view is that although it hasn't translated on the field in terms of team building I think in terms of culture building the duo of Robert Sala and Joe Douglas have given this organization the most like like structural stability that they've had in like literally 10 to 12 years. Are oh, you didn't and, like Mike McCagnan? Yeah. Yeah. The Mike McCagnan or John Idzik or Mike Tannenbaum three, like, you know, three like complete con artists, like yeah. as the, as the heads of the front office and, you know, Aaron and Mangini and Gase and Bowles, you know, like this is the most stability this team has had in ages. And my concern is that the, like, delusional expectations of New York team owners will come for the Johnson family as well. And they will basically be like, we're not competing for a Super Bowl. We need to fire these guys. Yeah. And they're not realizing they would without them realizing that firing them is the exact reason and the exact pattern that leads to people that leads to teams not winning championships.